Hello, this is Jim Matthews from GlassHoppa.com. Off on a tangent today with these wall-hanging planters that aren't really planters at all. They're open-backed half-rounds that fit flush against the wall and look great with silk flower arrangements, or in this case, rubber succulents. This picture popped up on Pinterest and stuck in my mind. It's ceramic work by Esther Studios in Los Angeles. The colors grabbed me, and so did the childlike, hand-drawn nature of the design. I imagined a simple rectangular base decorated with the striping, fired once to full fuse, and then draped over a half-round style mold, then a glass bottom attached with silicone. One look at these irregular lines and uneven stripes, and you think, well, that's about as simple a design as you can possibly imagine. And that would be correct, which left the door wide open for the glasshopper to overcomplicate it. First, I measured the molds. 12 inches for the large version and 7 for the little guy. Both will be 4 inches high. So here's my 4 by 12 rectangle. I used thin glass to reduce weight and put a little less stress on my silicone bond. And here are my colors. I'll list them on the blog in case you want to try a similar scheme. So, my thought was cut a strip with one irregular edge, then trace that edge on to the next color. Make the cut, discard the scrap piece, and now I've got two edges that fit nicely together. Then draw another irregular edge and make the cut to complete the second stripe. And repeat. Trace the last edge cut onto the next color, make the cut, discard the scrap, and complete the stripe by drawing another irregular edge, and a score, and a break. The strip lengths are uneven to add to the irregular look and feel of the project. If you take another look at my inspiration image, you'll see what I mean. So I put this guy in to cook. Then I took a look at the stack of discarded ends I'd created in the process of carefully fitting the other ones, and it dawned on me how much precision I'd devoted to mimic a look of imprecision. So just for fun, I collected the unrelated discards and kind of puzzle pieced them together. I accepted the gaps between them and figured they might heal over at full fuse, or considering what I had in mind, they wouldn't be noticed once the project was hung, and might even contribute to the asymmetrical look and feel. Doing this cuts the time it takes to complete this type of design in half, easily. So next time I want to make something that looks irregular, unbalanced, or crooked, I'll just be myself use my natural born skills and let it happen. Specifically, I think I'd cut my pieces one at a time, just eyeballing the edge each would rest adjacent to, and let the strips fall where they may. That, as opposed to doing all the tracing and the cutting and the fitting so that it looks like it was done that way. So here's the first firing, ready to slump. Now I did some extra measuring to make sure the piece was centered over the mold by finding the center of the mold and marking it, and then finding the center of the glass and marking it, and matching up those marks. And again, in she goes. Now that's a fast kiln. The firing schedules I used are on the project PDF. You'll find the link in the text of the blog post. Here's one of the smaller units, twice fired and ready for the next step. The bottom will simply take the shape of the bend with one flat edge to fit flush against the wall. I'll wipe away the sharpie so I can see the score run, and I'm just going to tap this out. The score wants to run in a straight line, so I pick the points where it will most naturally veer away from the curve and tap there first, to help the run follow the curve of the score. 
Then I tap between those points as if to connect the dots. If it doesn't give way to light pressure after that, I just gently whack away at it until it surrenders once and for all. One fat bead of silicone might not be enough to support this bottom well, so I'm going to use a piece of scrap glass to lift it up and create a shelf for a second bead of silicone to buttress it from underneath. You'll see what I mean. Tube of GE silicone. Squeeze out a toothpaste sized bead, then use a wetted fingertip or the back of a spoon to smooth it so there's uninterrupted adhesion on both the bottom and the side wall. I let this first bead dry for a few hours, long enough so it's strong enough to hold the bottom in place while I do the other side. See the lip I created by lifting up that floor? Now I'll fill that with another bead of silicone. Then again with the wet finger and we let this dry overnight. Anytime I use silicone for structural purposes, I reinforce it with a second application. So here I'm adding another bead, top and bottom, and smoothing it widely over the first ones. Now once these are dried and cured, it will be plenty strong enough for its intended purpose. Three holes are required for hanging. I measured in about a half inch from the middle of the top and both ends, drilled small pilot holes, then enlarged them later with a two millimeter bit. That's an old cast iron mortar I'm using as a support. Dremel tool, diamond bit intended for glass, bit and glass immersed in shallow water, and take your time. You'll notice me slightly lifting the bit every few seconds to let water enter the hole. I decided to call these faux planters because they're not really planters at all. Fill them with soil and water and you'll just make a mess. You could put a small potted plant in them, but I think florist foam and phony flowers are a better idea. I cut the foam first with an X-Acto knife and finished with a hacksaw blade. A steak knife would work just as well, but I would have had to tiptoe to the kitchen and sneak it past mom. This is leather cord from a local craft store. I ran one length from one end hole to the other. Mine is about 22 inches long end to end. And I tied a couple of little figure eight knots. Now I want to measure to be sure I get the center cord the right length. See how the middle will droop out without a lift from a third cord? So I'll add the center cord and then lift until the piece is just flush against the wall. Then I'll mark that cord where the top of its loop needs to be if this is going to hang nice and evenly. Instead of a visible knot, I decided to do a little functional wire wrap, always keeping my mark at the top of the loop. Nothing fancy here. Just an alternative to a knot. All right, here's the finished project. Strung, hung, and full of rubber succulents. Just in time for Mom's anger management group. You'll notice that I experimented with making these with both vertical and horizontal lines. Horizontal takes less time and effort, of course. There's only half as many stripes. But vertical's a nice look, too. On the other hand, maybe you won't do stripes at all. Like most fusing projects, once you have the form and the firing, the design possibilities are never-ending. 